Whoa, it's Woolsey. Welcome back to another Geometry Dash building video. Today is April Fools and I don't have like a clickbait funny title, you know, but I do have a video idea that's kind of fitting with the theme of April Fools, you know, like the kind of troll aspect of it. I want to make a troll level. I'm going to be using the song Lappin by Sir Cole. It's a pretty chill laid back beat that I can use for this with not much that's going to bind me to a specific game mode or feel or anything. You see, it's just kind of, it's in the background, right? If you guys like this video, I can definitely make this a full level and make a lot more episodes so stay tuned for that and hit the subscribe button if you enjoy what you're seeing right now is just an experimentation with the hitboxes of the object if i scale them to minus one something funny to notice is that this little blue dot if i turn the background to black you'll see that is the hitbox of this object when it is scale hacked into a negative scale which is basically just an exact replica of that object but without the hitbox because the hitbox is scaled all the way down and it doesn't go back up when you're scaling it further than negatively. It also makes this object really annoying to select. Okay, so let me just make a little landscape to start off the level with some of these objects. I guess I'll just use the box meta to set this out. That looks pretty funny to me. I want to see if it's possible in normal mode. Oh, it's gonna be a bit of a tight squeeze, isn't it? That looks possible. Hold on, if you jump here... Wow, this is really incredible work. What a great April Fool's Day this is. Wow, so awesome and calculated, right? Don't fade. They're going at the bottom of the entire level, B4, and I'm going to add a little block transition because I like the way these objects transition on and off the screen, how they kind of shrink. And enabling don't fade really makes that more visible because if I turn that off, you see it starts fading away and that whole effect is just a lot less obvious, a lot less opaque. It's really blunt if you do it like that, so I like it. Okay, so on the the foreground here, I'm going to put some sort of spike. Not a triple spike, because that would perfectly indicate where you're supposed to jump. I think something like this, if I just squish it together with a little mini space like that. I'll put that on B3, and I'll put it on the Z order 2, and then behind we can have a glow piece right here that is just right on the ground line. I'll scale it up pretty big. I mean, uh, scale hacking as usual, because I'm a little pleb. I'm going to put that B3, and I'm going to put that on Z order 1. So it's going behind the spikes, but in front of the other... Oh dear. Let me just fix the color real quick. Let's put it on color channel 2 and make it copy the color of the background. That's not as clean as I was hoping it would be. What I'm trying to do is create an area behind these spikes that just kind of makes them pop out from the background. In fact, let me just put that back to where it was and let me just change the color. If I make this a black instead of copying the color of the background and I'll change the opacity and stuff to make it work better. Oh, that's possible. Wow. Okay, so now I can have a quadruple spike or some sort of block right there. But I will turn down the glow because it is a bit unnecessary when there's no blocks behind it. I'm going to shrink each individual piece down to like a 1.5 or something. So it still ties in with the rest. And I'm pretty sure this works with portals as well if I turn on the hitboxes again. I'm using Mega Hack V6, which is provided by Absolute to make this video. He is an absolute legend. So this portal should just straight up not work. That is so weird. Oh! <laughs> I don't like that at all. I'm going to do the classic last second movement right here. I'm going to say right before you land on that object, it's going to move for zero seconds and it's going to go about two blocks to the right. And I'm going to negatively scale this object, I think, so we can jump through these. Oh, 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 okay. I'll make this a mini. That's going to make it a lot more safe. Wait, but where do I put the... I'm going to put the mini portal as invisible. I don't care. This is absolutely not meant to be taken seriously, so... Oh, oh god, you can really just land on like any of these objects. What the heck? This is so weird to mess around with. What? You can make that. Okay. Very cool. And that just doesn't feel real. It just doesn't feel right to just be able to jump through that block over the double spike. More fake portals. You love to see it, don't you? <laughs> now it's time to make a fake jump pad. Yes, sir. Wait, is this still going to be hit? Yes, it is, but it's much later than normal. Very interesting. So if I scale it up, then it's just completely troll. Cool. If I put a spike like right here, people are going to be like, how do you jump over that? Because, you know, it looks like you can't hit the yellow at all. Wait, I just realized that if I'm recording this and someone that watches this video goes and plays this level, I'm basically just exposing all the... Mm. Well, I don't suppose it matters that much. Like, this level is not serious whatsoever. It's April Fool's Day. So, of course, I'm going to be a little dude. Ooh. 
Same concept as earlier. We're going to fall through that block onto the line of blue pads, and that hopefully will put us underneath that object. I'm not sure. It definitely will if I move it like this. Move. Why did I say it like that? If I have a yellow orb right here. Okay, this is going to be quite complicated. I'm just realizing. Okay, so this orb needs a group three. Three needs to be toggled around about here. This orb needs to be moved 10 minus 5, so 95 to the right and 2 up. That's going to be on a group 4, which I'm going to place at the exact same time as that toggle trigger. So in a second, you won't be able to tell that this orb has been moved. This is how you make a fake orb without any reverse hitboxes or anything. Then while that happens, I replace the original orb with another on group number 5. So you can't tell that anything's being moved whatsoever. Let me just go frame by frame here with some speed hack in the editor. Okay, so... The orbs switch. It looks like this one disappears, but this one is moving on to this one. At the same time that this one is moving over here, and this real one is getting toggled. Orbs can only be hit once, so once I use this orb and it gets moved over to this block, it's not actually available over here. So I'm playing in slow motion right now. Let me just out gamer this pad, jump again through the ship portal, which does not change me whatsoever, onto this yellow. Boom! It's clicked. Oh, please don't put me onto the other block. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die! I'm gonna be doing something called buffer clicking. If you don't know what that is, it's basically holding before you get to an input so the instant you get there, like the very first possible frame you come into contact with the hitbox, you can use that orb. That's what I'm doing to showcase this. I'm going to buffer this again, but you'll see that it's not going to work. I fall right through. The little white circle didn't even show up with this orb. You see, normally when you hit an orb, there is a little white circle that appears as you approach the hitbox. Watch this right here. Oh, what? I restarted while it was in the end sequence. Okay, just ignore the orange stripe. There is a little white circle. You see that? It like exuberates. It emanates the orb's power. But when I get to this one, that just doesn't show up at all. Level complete? What do you mean? <laughs> I love hacking. Oh, jeez. Yeah, this is totally what's happening right now. Yeah, that is so weird. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of correction here. So as long as you're still buffering on the yellow, you will hit this green immediately. Okay, it's time to put a spike pit and a spike ceiling. I'm going to give this block a group number six, and I'm going to make it move to the right by one full block. I don't want to explain this too often. Basically, in this move box right here, one block is 10 on the x-axis. So if I type in 10 right there, that's going to move this block right here like that. I mean, it's kind of strange because in the editor, 15 mini steps, these arrows right here, watch, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's not a full block, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 15 is. I'm not sure why the move trigger is like this, where 10 is a full block. It It's strange, but I suppose 10 is also a much nicer number. I'm going to do a funny spawn real quick. I am going to spawn trigger and multi-trigger this trigger right here, giving it the group 7. I'm going to place down a spawn here, spawning 7, with a 0.3 delay, because it's 1, 2, 3 blocks up until that point, and a square in the editor, I believe, is 0.1 seconds. Then I'm going to spawn and multi-trigger the same trigger, but with a 0.1 delay instead. And that should be it if I add the group 7 here. <laughs> we have a little bridge being made for us, and it just goes into the sunset. It just keeps going forever, because that's what a spawn trigger does. It's basically just looping well, at least the way I've set it up, I have set this to constantly just spawn itself. Okay. And for the end of this level, I'm just going to put a yellow pad. Just nothing special. So I want to use some more spawn triggers to show you what you can do with the background and the blocks with just a few triggers, honestly. Background pulse trigger. I'm going to give it a 0 0.05 fade in, 0 0.05 fade out. So it adds up to make 0.1 because that's the smallest delay you can add to a spawn trigger, if I am not mistaken. It requires a delay to work because otherwise you're probably just going to overload the game and stuff. We're going to use the HSV pulse mode so we can copy the color of the background and increase the brightness and the saturation ever so slightly. We've got to spawn and multi-trigger this, give it a group number eight. I just think it's a pretty nice thing to have instead of just having a static color. The objects I'm going to make go down in their brightness instead, and they don't need the saturation because they're literally just white. I'm going to increase this to a 0.3, and I'm just going to completely extend the fade times on both of these. The nice thing about copying the color on a pulse trigger is that if I now change the color right here and just click the default button so I have the same shade, I can now shift this so it will go around the rainbow just by changing hues real quick. I mean, you can spawn loop these, but it's just not worth it when there's so few of these to work with. So I have a little flashy rainbow adventure with only a few objects, to be honest. I'm going to turn off the hitboxes to make this a more pure troll 
scrolling experience, but this is actually kind of interesting. I've put in a few ideas with it. I mean, it's actually quite difficult. I was hoping it would be like an easy kind of troll level where you can really easily figure it out, but I've went with a lot of different ideas here <laughs> and I can easily make more. I can make this a full level for sure. Maybe even add some trollish decoration one day. This is it. This is the April Fool's. I don't know. I... Ah, uh, just stuff, really. This is just a random brain dump series, I guess, if it continues. But happy April Fool's Day. Bigger videos are on the way. I promise. This is just a little joke. Thank you for watching this April Fool's. That's it. Just leave a like, subscribe. Goodbye. Have a good day. I forgot what my outro was. Um, this is this is really awkward now. Um, you, can, you can go now. The, the video's over. It, it's it's done. You can go now. Why are you still here? I mean, I'm gonna leave, but if you guys want to stay, sure. I'm, I'm gone. This this is the end of the video now. You can you can leave. You can go now. God damn, that video was terrible. Wait, you, why are you still here? <laughs> Dude, there's nothing more to this video. It's it's over. You can leave. Look. It's done. You can go. Look. It's gone. Okay? You, you don't even know what you're getting into now. Like, this is... This is what happens when the cameras turn off. You're not supposed to see any of this. You're not supposed to... Like, this isn't supposed to be something that you're, you know, privy to. This is all private. You're literally intruding. Like, stop. You're watching me die on Electrodynamics. Please go away. Please. Please. I'll just turn off my computer.